here we are with another episode of the Arduino 101 series, which if you remember are tutorials about Arduino, but not basic anymore. Here we learn some more in-depth stuff about this microcontroller. And today we will learn about all the blocks of the analog to digital converter, or ADC. What registers we need to work with, how to define the analog reference, the sample rate prescaler, select the inputs with a multiplexer, and quite interesting, how to read the internal temperature sensor, because yes, the Arduino has an internal temperature sensor. So basically, we will learn what the analog read function does. When this video is over, you should know what each of these blocks will do. So guys, let's get started. These PCBs were manufactured by PCBWay, and the finish quality is very good, especially with these gold-plated pads. If you want to finish your product faster, you could also ask PCBWay to make a panelized order, where you receive multiple PCBs on a single panel. Together with this, you can also order the SMD stencil from PCBWay, and use it to add solder paste, and then solder all the components at once, and by that you save time and effort. All the orders are high quality, and you could select a lot of settings, such as the thickness, flexible PCBs, the color of the solder mask, the amount of layers, the material, the surface finish, and more. So upload the Gerber files directly on PCBWay.com and make the order in just a couple of minutes. What's up my friends, welcome back. We will use the Arduino Uno for the examples, and if you want to know more about any other Arduino model, just check the same registers in the datasheet of the other microcontrollers. Remember that the Atmega 328P microcontroller has 8 analog inputs for the AU version and 6 analog inputs for the PU version. We use these inputs to measure voltage and pass from analog to digital values, which in this case the Arduino Uno has a 10 bits ADC, so digital values from 0 to 1023. But there is a little bit more than the well-known analog read function, so let's dive in. These are all the blocks that we use for the analog to digital conversion, and by the end of this video you should know what each of these blocks will do. Here we have two main registers, and we will learn what each of their bits will do in the code, registers ADMAX and the ADC SRA. These blocks control the analog reference, and in a moment we will see what is that. This other block here controls the analog input from A0 to A7. And by the way, if you didn't know, the Atmega 328 has an internal temperature sensor that we could use, and in a moment, we will see an example. Now here is where the conversion is made, and by setting these 3 bits for the prescaler, we can change the sample rate of the ADC conversion. And finally, here is the digital output, divided into 2 bytes, because the ADC has 10 bits, and a byte has only 8 bits, so we need 2. Ok, so let's start step by step with each part and with examples for each one. Let's say that you want to read the analog input on A4. So you would do in the code something like this, right? But using registers it would be something like this. Basically the analog read function already does this internally. So let's see what each of these lines in the code is supposed to do. First let's select the input of the ADC. We have just one ADC conversion block, so we need to select the input separately and make the measurement. As you can see, the multiplexer for the input is controlled with these 4 bits, from max 0 to max 3. These bits are from the ADMAX register. So if these bits are 0000, the ADC input will be the A0 pin. But if the bits are 0001, it will be A1, 0010 it will be for A2, and so on, as in this table. So in the code, if you want to read the A4 input for example, we make this line. ADMAX or equal to 00000100. So now A4 is connected to the ADC conversion block. Next we need to indicate the voltage reference. But what is that? Well, in order to make a conversion, the ADC needs to compare the analog input with a known value, which by default is the microcontroller supply the VCC line. 
otherwise you wouldn't know what you are measuring. Usually the VCC for the Arduino is 5 volts. So in this way the Arduino knows that the maximum, so 1023, would be for 5 volts, and the minimum would be for 0 volts. So imagine that you make a measurement and the analog grid will give you a value of 614 let's say. But what voltage is that? Well, what we usually do in the code to pass from digital values to voltage values is to divide the analog reference voltage by the maximum digital value, which is 1024. Then we multiply that value by the analog read, which was 614, and we get a read of 3 volts. But this process implies that the reference voltage is 5 volts. But I can assure you that this is never true. The Arduino board uses a voltage regulator to get 5 volts. But this voltage is sometimes 4.9 volts and sometimes is more than 5 volts, or a value in between, but it's quite impossible to have a voltage exactly at 5 volts. So that means that the analog grid we have made before could not be precise. And another example is when you supply the Arduino with a battery. Because as you know, the Arduino could work with no problems with voltages above 2.5 volts. So for example we connect a 4.2 volts battery to the VCC pin. And now the analog reference is not 5 volts anymore, it's 4.2 volts, so the code before would be affected. For some more precise reads, the Arduino chip has an internal voltage reference, that usually is more precise. For the Arduino Uno we have a 1.1 volts internal reference, but the Arduino Mega also has a 2.56 volts reference. The reference could also be external, and in this case it will be any voltage that you connect at the RF pin of the board. So if you connect for example 3 volts, the reference will be 3 volts. But in order to select these analog references, we need to set them in the code. As you can see here, to select between these three reference inputs, we need to use the REFS1 and the REFS0 bits. If both these bits are 0, that means that these max and these fat are disabled, so the reference will be external from the ARF pin. If the REFS0 is a 1, then we can select between the VCC and internal reference with the REFS1 bit. If the REFS1 is a 0, then the reference is VCC. And if this bit is a 1, then the reference will be the internal 1.1 volts. These two bits are from the ADMAX register, bit 6 and 7. So in order to select the internal reference in the code, we make the ADMAX or equal to 11000000, so now those two bits are 11. If you don't want to use registers, you can also do these lines with this function in the code. Analog reference and then you add the type, which could be any of these values depending on the Arduino model. Ok, so now we have the ADC input selected and the reference as well. All we need is to make the conversion which is controlled with the ADC SRA register. To start the conversion, we need to put the ADEN and the ADSC bits to 1. Then we have to wait till the conversion is over, and we will have the digital value on the ADCH and the ADCL bytes, where H and L stands for high and low sides of the value. So now in the code, we make the ADC SRA or equal to 11000000, and that will start the conversion. But now, how do we know when the conversion is done? Well, we can make a while, and inside this we can place if bit is set and select the ADSC bit of the ADC SRA register, because this bit will automatically go to 0 when the conversion is over, so while the ADSC is a 1, the conversion is still going. And finally, our digital value is equal to the high side of the read plus the low side of the read, with a total of 10 bits. So we make the sum of the low side with the high side, but shifting 8 bits to the left, so when we merge them together it will represent 16 bits. And that's it, that's how we make the analog read using registers. So look, I upload this code to the Arduino, and I get the analog read on my monitor. And this is the same if I were to use the analog read function. But this time is made with registers, so we have learned something new. But now let's see why you should use the internal voltage reference of 1.1 volts. Remember my smartwatch project? In that video I was measuring the voltage of my battery, in order to print that value on the screen. 
because it's quite common for electronic devices to do that. Even your smartphone will show you the battery percentage, right? But this is the problem. I want to measure the battery voltage. But the anode reference is the battery itself, because the battery is the supply of my Arduino. So let's say that the battery is charged to 4 volts, for example. So I make the ADC conversion and the chip will compare the measured 4 volts with the analog reference, which if it's defined to be by default the VCC value, it will be 4 volts as well. So the ADC would give us the maximum value, which is 1023. But let's say that after a while, the battery voltage decreased to 3.8 volts. So now we measure with the ADC 3.8 volts. But the VCC is also 3.8 volts. So the analog grid will give us maximum once again. So you see the problem? Without using an external voltage reference, the Arduino would think that the battery is always full. But if I define in the code the ADC reference to be the fixed value of 1.1 volts, the voltage won't change its value with the battery. So now we could measure the battery voltage while supplying the Arduino with that same battery. All we have to do is to add a voltage divider from the battery to the ADC input in order to lower the voltage to below 1.1 volts because that is our maximum value if we use the internal reference. So this would be the code if you want to read the voltage using the internal reference and the voltage divider of 1K and 4.7K. So here I supply my Arduino with 5 volts from the power supply to simulate the battery, and then I run this code. In this case the reference is the default one, which is VCC. On the display I print the supply level. And as you can see I start changing the supply but the value on the screen is always the same, and that's not good. But now I run this code where I define the internal reference of 1.1 volts. I also multiply the read by the inverted value of the voltage divider, which is made with a 1K resistor and a 4.7K. Now when I change the supply value, the value on the screen changes as well, so we have solved the problem. But now remember that I've told you that the Arduino has an internal temperature sensor. If we take a look at the ADC blocks, that sensor is connected at the input 11. So if we set the AD max to have the max bits to 1000, then the sensor is connected to the ADC conversion block. The sensitivity of this sensor is approximately 1 mV per Celsius degree, and this is a quite bad sensor with an accuracy of plus minus 10 degrees. But anyway, we make this code and we set the AD max or equal to 00001000. So now the sensor is connected to the ADC. According to some internet values, we have to divide the analog read by 1.22 and also subtract the offset. And this will be the temperature in Celsius degrees. So I upload this code and run the serial plotter. And as you can see, when I hit the chip, the temperature goes up and that's it. You could use this to monitor more or less the IC temperature. Ok, so one more thing. If you want to change the sample rate of the ADC, you can do that by changing the prescaler. That is controlled with the ADC SRA register as well, with the first 3 bits. So according to this table, you can set the prescaler to be from 2 up to 128. The Arduino is running at 16 MHz. So for example, if we set the ADC SRA to be or equal to 00000111, so the prescaler is 128, the sampling rate will be 16 MHz divided by 128, so 125 kHz. And by the way, the maximum sampling rate of the Arduino ADC is 200 kHz. So now you know how all these blocks work and which register you need to control in order to make the conversion. Also why the internal reference is so important. I hope that you have learned something new and if so, give me a like or comment below in order to help my channel. Thanks again and see you later guys. Hey guys, so we are at the end of this video. So some of you guys are supporting me on Patreon and thank you very much for that because thanks to you I'm able to buy all these components and the modules that I use for my tutorials. And if you would like to support me as well, you have the links for my Patreon, for my website and my shop below in the description. Thank you for everything.